Environmental stakeholders have called on the federal government and individuals to take action to check the different threats climate change pose to humans, animals, and the environment. They make this known as they took a National Climate Action Awareness March in Abuja. They say there's an urgent need to stop fossil fuel consumption to ensure the environment is safer for plants and animals to thrive. We want real climate action. What do we want? Climate action. When do we want it? Now. So in few minutes time, we will be observing the countdown. As you can see the climate clock, we have less than 43 minutes before it will change from six years to five years. It means that humanity and all of us have about five years to take climate action before it will get to a point of irreversible change. We have not met the Paris Agreement. The targets have not been met. Promises were made both by global countries and even global south countries. $100 billion every year. That money has not been released. So, it means that by 2030, the global temperature will go above 1.5 degrees. Right now, we can feel that the world is warming, global warming, everywhere. And the impact of that on our health, on our food systems, on everything will be devastating. So we don't want the world temperature to go above 1.5 degrees by 2030. And that is why we are calling for an end to fossil fuels and just transition to renewable energy. If there is rain, we cannot go to school. In some communities, we cannot access healthcare. We cannot access um, um, maybe the basic needs. So why don't we have that in check? So it's not just about having um, resources go to other paths, but if the climate is being addressed, it's something that will go a long way in supporting us not to have other issues. So I think it's, it's better for the new administration that we have look at what is um, in an emergency stage. So a funding is categorized into everything. If you look at, okay, funding is required in our basic education, funding is required in our basic health, as well as funding is required in the climate and in other environmental issues. So what I will say is there are, other, there are other possible places where government might look into and see, and see um, the decaying in the system from our basic education, secondary education, tertiary education, basic health, um, primary health, secondary health, and then tertiary health, all these th uh, are things that need um, um, consideration. And then, you know, we're witnessing something new, right? Um, for, 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 for some years now, we've been enjoying what is called petroleum subsidy without understanding what's really the implication of it. And now, there is no what is called petroleum subsidy and everybody is buying petroleum at a higher cost. So the economy is somehow dwindling. Right, so all the government could do is not just about palliative. Who are the people that are suffering from this? What are the measures government can do? You know, and then how will government monitor and evaluate the measures that they are taking? The federal government have put in place a lot of intervention to bring down the emission, and knowing quite well that the uh, UNFCCC has a binding agreement that all country parties should queue into and Nigeria is not in exception. Uh, Nigeria at this moment have reversed their national determined contribution which we call NDCs and going forward to achieve the NDC target last uh, administration of Mr. President Buhari or the former president uh, Muhammad Buhari has uh, assured the nation that uh, by 2060, that Nigeria is uh, going to achieve a net zero. One thing I would say for the government to do is to gear the implementation of some of these policies. 
because uh, and also for youth inclusion. Since they say the youth are the catalyst for the implementation, youth more youth should be included. More you, more women should be given platforms to air their voices. Women are affected in the local communities at the national level. Women are affected, so there is need for us to give women the platform put up interventions that will give positive impact in the lives of these women, put up programs that will have prominent focus on the women because they are affected mostly. They are, uh, the, the community, are, when, when flooding happens, it affects them most. When there's drought, it affects them. They are in their houses, they are our mothers, they are our sisters. We are the women. We need our voices to be heard globally. We do not have the technology to at least, you know, um, um, cushion the effect of climate change or climate action in, the, in, the, in, in Nigeria as it stands. And one of the major challenges that we have been having is the fact that the narrative of climate change seems very bizarre and unreal to a lot of people. We still do not understand what it means to say, let us save the planet. So Nigeria is very pertinent. In Africa, we are uh, referred to as one of those countries that need to act fast, need to act in time to avoid, avert the worst climate uh, action or crisis that can happen to humanity.